any questions from the audience. Okay, uh, thank you for the lecture, Ahmad. Everyone might have loved your lecture for today. My pleasure. Question number one. Hi, it's exactly what I've been looking for. I'm still thinking about getting one intraoral scanner. Which one would you recommend for a beginner like me among medic scanners? Does speed that affect my daily life in the clinic? So uh, it's a common question that I get almost every single week. Um, you know, which scanner should I buy? And, and the person who asked that question asked amongst the meta scanners. So to me, that's quite a simple uh, thing because what it really comes down to is your budget. As I mentioned, if the I-600 is available in your region, wherever you are, I think you just should forget about the I-500. That shouldn't be your choice. The I-600 is significantly better, and it's basically the complete successor to the I-500. So if budget is you know, the key thing in your mind when you're investing into a scanner, you want the most economical option, I would suggest the I-600. If it's not just about budget and you want the best possible medit scanner, then you would choose between I-700 or I-700 wireless. Both work. I like wireless scanners, um, but you know I don't think that is my main buying decision. If I had to choose between the two, I don't mind having a wired scanner. The wireless scanner is a little bit heavier, but I do appreciate that some people just love wired technology. It does make the ergonomics a bit easier. You're not dealing with a cord, but you are dealing with batteries. So fundamentally, it just comes down to what you like. If you like wireless technology, get the i700 wireless. If it doesn't matter to you too much, get the i700. And if you're looking for the most cost-effective meta scanner, get the i600. Okay, thank you for answering that. Question number two, sometimes it's super hard to capture metal. Any tips? Someone told me that Vaseline helps scan metal, but I'm afraid it thickens the metal crumb. Yeah, so look, the uh, metal scanning thing is also something that comes up a lot. and People do talk about scan sprays. They talk about all sorts of things like sandblasting metals to make them rough. Or fundamentally, what you need to understand is the reason why scanning metals can be difficult, especially with shiny metals, is that the scanner is, is projecting light, either LED or structured light or whatever. At the end of the day, it's light. And if this reflects off very shiny metal and goes into the mirror and into the sensor, it basically overexposes everything. So the, the sensor inside the scanner can't see what you're trying to scan. That's fundamentally the problem. I personally never use scan sprays. I've scanned a lot of metals, everything from, you know, tie bases to shiny amalgam fillings or alloys from Japan or, you know, uh, partial metal frameworks. And the technique I use is simply angle the scanner in a way that when that light is shining on the metal, it's not all reflecting back into the sensor. It's all about your angulation and your scanning technique. In saying that, the meta scanners do have a number of software tools that you can use, such as a metal scanning mode, AI mode. So I would utilize those. But if everything fails, you can use a scan spray. Okay, question number three, how accurate is scanning than impression taking? Uh, there's been, again, tons of literature on this topic. And look, anecdotally, I don't take impression anymore. Very rarely, except for full, full dentures, um, if the patient's completely edentulous. So in my opinion, from my personal experience of using scanners every single day, uh, almost since I've graduated, I don't really need impression material anymore. Uh, a scanner is more than accurate than an impression. And in my opinion, it's more accurate because we minimize all this, you know, inaccuracies with mixing stone, mixing plaster, pouring it up, who poured it up, air bubbles. Um, but there has been literature to show. There's a lot of literature these days to show that scanning is is clinically acceptable alternative to impression taking, and you should be confident when you're taking your scans, that this will work. The key though is equally literature has shown that there can be inaccuracies with scanners, 
but the number one reason is operator error. So you need to know how to use your scanner properly and you need to know how to use the software. Okay, uh, question number four. My friend told me wireless is more hassle. Do you agree with that? Yeah, look, uh, that's a common sentiment. You know, wireless scanners are a little bit more hassle. Not really. I mean, the idea that they don't connect well or they lose connection is all, you know, dated knowledge from, pre from probably the first ever wireless scanner. These days, the connections are stable. They work well. They're fast. They feel just like the wired counterparts. The only hassle is batteries. Some people really get annoyed when batteries run out and have to constantly be charging batteries. Some people don't mind it. So if you're one of those people that doesn't want to deal with batteries, don't get a wireless scanner. If you're one of those people that likes the idea of not having to have a wire, get a wireless scanner. Mm, that's very clear. Uh, question number five. I think there are two main kinds of intraoral scanner. It's either con, it's either confocal or optical triangulation. Would you mind telling me which one is more accurate? There's realistically no difference between the two. Um, so yeah, triangulation or confocal imaging. There's a lot of different scanners that use different technology. Um, some of the common scanners you'll see, such as Prime Scan, Itero, I believe use triangulation or confocal, one or the other. And basically, all the other smaller scanners use the other type. So commonly, you will find people arguing about this fact. But the reality is there's been literature to show that uh, they compare scanners, not the hardware or the type of technology, but they just compare scanners. But you can conclude that that applies to the hardware or the type of technology they use. And what the literature has shown is that there's basically very little difference between scanners on the market these days. We're talking about 5, 10, 15, 20 microns difference between the most accurate scanner and the least accurate scanner. So I wouldn't worry too much about these semantics and, and these you know hardware differences. I would worry more about what does the, does the scanner enable you to do in your practice? What does the scanner software enable you to do? Um, the budget, you know, your, your, the cost of the scanner, these are much more important questions than triangulation or confocal. Okay, question number six. What if I use a scanner? Do I still need to use a cord? Uh, yes, I hope you do. And I'm assuming that you're talking about the crown preparation. And, and yes, guys, a scanner is not a some magical device. You know, we all got taught in dental school that when we're taking impressions, we should use cord. You need to use proper gingival management techniques. And the same applies for scanners, my friends. You have to use cord, in my opinion, for every single crown preparation. And that's what I do in my practice every single day. I am aware there's super gingival margins and all of these things and conservative crown preps and crown lays. And look, if the soft tissue is far away from your preparation, don't use cord. But for 99% of crown preparations, oftentimes when you break the interproximal contact, there's decay. Oftentimes there's a deep filling and your preparation will be at least in the interproximal areas, equi or subgingival. And in those cases, you must use cord. You need to control the tissue. You need to control the bleeding to get an accurate scan. As I mentioned, the number one reason for inaccurate scans is operator error. Okay, last question. So question number seven, how can I record a patient's multiple bytes, such as CO byte and CR byte, so that my lab can see them? Please let me know how to do it. So there's two main ways. There's a lot of jaw motion tracking devices out there, Mojo, Zebris. Um, outside of those devices, there's also software applications and software techniques that you can use. For example, with the Medit software, you can uh, choose different bytes to take and this is all something that you can explore in the the education academy so I would suggest that if you're using a medit scanner and you want to know how to do this you do a little bit of training on on the occlusion side of the software because through the software itself you can capture multiple bytes 
You can even use the scanner as sort of like a video camera and, and capture like a, a video record of the bite, which can be used with the scans. So all of that is possible with the Meta scanners and using the software. And like I say, if you want to go even further than that, I would explore the jaw motion tracking devices that exist on the market. Um, but there are definitely multiple ways of, of capturing a patient's jaw motion and their bite. And it's just a matter of, of understanding the software within the Medit platform, within Medit link, and, and how to use this. Okay. Okay, that was it. My pleasure. So it was a pleasure to have you, Dr. Ahmad. Thank you so much, Jenny. And as always, it's a huge honor to be invited to these Medit webinars. And, and once again, thank you everyone who tuned in. It means a lot for you to support my webinar and also to support this webinar series. And I look forward to talking to you next time about the next uh, topic. Yeah, see you next time. We can watch the uh, previous webinars in our YouTube channel too. Bye-bye. See you later, guys. Have a good day.